Oh man, I am so beat. Oh. Ugh. Okay, okay, okay. I'm kind of awake now. Oh, well, it's been a, it's been an interesting three weeks. It is so nice to see you, to see your smiling faces and your wet noses. It's been a while. Um, been a long time. I've been a little preoccupied. Things at the clinic are changing, um, working more. And then three weeks ago, three Mondays ago, I come home from work and I see Holly sitting there right in front of the fireplace, struggling to get up, whining, tail wagging as always whining and uh, her eyes are doing this freaking out a little so in the medical world that's called nystagmus when the eyes are uncontrollably going that way freaking out a little and first thing that came to my mind was this colloquial term we call old dog vestibular disease so Holly is 12 plus years old so it is it's highly likely she's got this vestibular syndrome and so I immediately pick her up carry her into the car uh, I freaked out my neighbors carrying my dog carrying Holly out of the house into the car to get her carry her back into the clinic and we started administering anti-nausea medication so the best analogy to understand is that her world was spinning. So if you've ever done this, and I know that some of you have, and some of you are going to do it after this, is get in a chair and spin around, or get someone to spin you around, and then stop the chair immediately. And if they look at your eyes, they will see your eyes darting in the direction that you are spinning. But you, as the person in the chair, are going to be suffering vertigo. That spinny feeling is like trying to get up and walk after you're spinning around. You see little kids do that all the time. But that's what her world was doing. So our goal in the medical profession is to stop that from happening. But, but I digress. So vestibular disease is, and I apologize, I'm tired, but vestibular disease can be caused by a potential neurologic issue, i.e. a brain tumor. Not a tumor! It can be caused by an inner ear infection. Um, but many times, especially in older pets, it's idiopathic or causes unknown, idiopathic. And so um, that's the one I always hope for. That's the one that I always strive for and we treat accordingly. Um, when I first started practicing, we used to treat with um, antibiotics because you want to deal with any deep inner ear infection. And, and just so you know, like if you get a deep ear infection and your pets get that, then they can get this sort of syndrome. Holly's doesn't have an ear infection, ears were clear. So we have to potentially opt for a deep inner ear infection. Um, and we also have to treat with anti-nausea meds. So Dramamine, or the drug name is Meclizine, is used. And we continue that until signs subside. And it can be as early as 24 hours, it can be as late as a few weeks. And so um, in Holly's case, Though she had the vertigo, she still ate well. Um, so I continued meclizine, the Dramamine, for two weeks, and she's still on an antibiotic. But the difficult component, and the one that's most scary as a pet parent, is she was unable to stand or walk for four days. And so um, it was just a matter of, and, she, and as a result, she would urinate on herself. She didn't really eat much, so defecation wasn't really an issue, but um, it was... That video that, that you're seeing is um, her on the day that she actually stood up or tried to move forward. And that was Friday of that week. Um, and then she bounced back and now she's able to move around, but she's still unsteady on stairs. Immediately when she steps on a stair, her head tilts. Her tongue comes out like so forth, and she's just not very steady on the stairs. So I'm working on that, um, trying to get her 
to go up the stairs. Um, and in this video, you're going to see me the day of presentation. I'm sitting there and I'm I'm trying to explain what vestibular disease is and what we train. And all the while, I am freaking out inside. Um, so right now, because she's doing so well, I want to rule out a primary neurologic, i.e., a brain tumor on the low end. Um, but because she's not recovering, it is a concern. And um, I personally, in the, in the cases I've treated. I've never gone this far. It's 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 one of those things that that I'm, you know, her head tilt's almost gone, but it's still there. I guess I'll be sleeping on the couch for, I'm hoping just for, a few days more, so that she can get her her ability to climb up the stairs. And unfortunately, I only have one long set of stairs here, 14 steps. I don't have anything short that she can go up and down, and we can practice on. Um, but that's where we are. It's one of those things. I think it's like life with a senior pet, and what you need to deal with. Got me scared as a pet parent, and I understand all the pet parents out there what what this can happen. Special thanks to Pete Chapman and um, Joe Eagleson at VSEC for um, helping guide me through this, uh, and hopefully everything will get better. But that's why I've been kind of out of commission for three weeks. It's I'm not getting much sleep, <laughs> as you can tell. But remember, everyone, love your pet like they love you unconditionally. Have a great night. You're like a circle that floats around me, keeping me safe and sound. And when I fall, you've tied a rope to me. You're blessing me every day. I was down with an illusion, like a sparrow with broken wings. But now I shine. Getting back up on my feet